glory. Ezekiel 37, verse one, the hand of the Lord was on me and he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them and I saw a great and mighty bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? And I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know. You alone know. I'm gonna stop right there. We are, we are in a series entitled, What to Do in a Valley. How to Navigate Life's Valleys. And today I wanna talk about miracles in the valley. Miracles in the valley. Touch your neighbor, tell them there's a miracle. Come on, tell them there's a miracle in the valley. Come on, let them know there's a miracle in the valley. Father, in Jesus' name, help me to share these truths with your people. These are your people, the sheep of your pasture, and I pray that you would speak in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, Caesar. Amen. Uh, I want to just a little bit of review quickly. Uh, Remember that God is taking Israel out of Egypt. He's taking them out of the wilderness. He's taking them into their promised land, into their promised place, into God's will, into their destiny, into their purpose. And God describes their promised place, their promised land. Deuteronomy 11, 11. The land you will take over. This is, this is, this is yours. It's, it's God's gift to you. It will be a land of hills and valleys. Yeah, it, it's, it's not all mountaintops. There's going to be some hills and some valleys. It will be a land Flowing with milk and honey, yes. There will be vineyards you will not have to plant and houses you will not have to build and wells you will not have to dig. These are all the promises of God about the promised land. It is good, 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 good. And there will be giants. Amen. There will be battles. There will be walled cities. There will be There will be some really high highs and yes, there will be some lows. There will be some ups and downs, some victories and battles. So there is no valley-free life. I wish I could tell you, if you just had more faith, you would not have challenges. (laughs) I've discovered that sometimes it's my faith that leads me into the challenge. So just a quick reminder, there is no fruit on the mountain. Just snow and more snow and more snow. There is only fruit in the valley. There is only fruit in the valley. But now let me remind you, there's not only fruit in the valley, there's miracles in the valley. And I believe, for many of you, it it is time to believe God for a miracle moment in the valley. Uh, Miracle, the divine, sudden intervention of God. All of the sudden. 164 miracles are recorded in the Bible, 164, about 80 in the Old Testament, 80 in the New Testament. Jesus performed 37 miracles. Catherine Coleman said, I believe in miracles because I believe in God. I cannot separate God from the miraculous, and I cannot separate the miraculous from God. He is a way maker. Can I get an amen in the 845? He's a miracle worker. He's a mountain mover. He's a sick healer. He's a heart mender. He's a soul restorer. He's a spirit reviver. This is the God that we serve, the God of miracles. And in your life, you're going to need a couple of miracles. You're not going to need a miracle every day or every week, but, but a couple of times through your life, you're going, to, you're going to be at a low point. You're going to say, God, you're going to need to show up or I'm toast. <laughs> Ezekiel saw the valley, but God saw a miracle in the making. And I want to tell you, I believe there's a miracle in the making. <laughs> uh, number one, God works in the valley. I, I, want you to, I want you to feel this. God works in the valley. I want you to focus in on One word from the question, can these bones live, 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 life, restoration, revival, renewal, 
Can, can, can something good come out of this? Can, can life come out of this? Can, can, can restoration come out of a dead thing? I know the bones are dry, which means there was death, and then the animals ate what they could, and then the sun dried out the rest. So I know this is dead and been dead for a long time, but can I bring it back to life? See, whatever God is doing and wherever God is leading, hear me, it's good. Yes, yes. So good. The will of God is life. God works in the valley. The thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come that you might have and enjoy and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Wow. That's the will of God for you. Life. Life. This, is, this word life here is zoe. It means the supernatural life of God. It, 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 it means life beyond natural life. It, it's supernatural life. It's supernatural peace. It's, it's supernatural joy. It's, it's life beyond anything else. If it, if it has to do with death, it's the devil. And if it has to do with life, it's God. God is the God of life. And he's asking you today, can these bones live? Can you see what I could do in you and through you and for you? Don't focus on the bones. Focus on the life giver. That God is willing. Jesus told the man in Mark chapter 1 verse 41, I am willing. I am willing. Be healed. I am willing. I want you to, we're gonna, we're gonna say this confession together on the screen. Everybody say, God is willing. God is, willing. God is, working. God is working. God is writing my story. Ooh, where's our worship team at? Write a song, Lauren, this week. I need a song. No pressure by next week. God is willing. I'm kidding, kinda. God is willing. God is working. God is writing my story. One more time. Come on. God is willing. God is working. God is writing my story. Oh, I'm in a valley, but God's writing my story. I'm, I'm facing a giant, but God's writing my story. I'm, I'm, I'm in a challenge, but God is working. I, I see dry bones, but God sees possibilities. Today's bones will be tomorrow's miracles. Today's test is tomorrow's testimony. Today's battle is tomorrow's victory. Today's fight is tomorrow's miracle. God is willing. God is working. God is writing my story. It's bones right now. Ooh, it's dry bones right now. But I serve the God that can restore the years. That can restore my soul. That can revive the dream. That can speak to the dead places in my life and bring them back to life. Do not let go of the God of life. Don't ignore his whispers of hope. Do not deny the power of his word. God is willing. God is working. God is writing my story. The valley of dry bones will become the valley of victory and blessing. Jehoshaphat, a king in the Old Testament, is under attack. Second Chronicles chapter 20, they're under attack. God gives them instructions. God gives them a plan. They go into prayer and fasting, and God gives them an idea. They go out. They execute the plan. They obey God. There's a, there's a massive victory. And after the victory, this is what Jeho Jehoshaphat does. Second Chronicles 20, 23. They gathered, watch this, they named it the Valley of Blessing. It got, the, it got its name that day. Oh, I love that. That God gives you history. That God gives you moments. That God gives you victories. That God gives you places. That, that's my valley of blessing. It was my valley of battle. But it became my valley of blessing. It was my, it was my tallest giant, but it became my valley of blessing. It was the worst, darkest night of my soul, but God turned it in to the valley of blessing. And it's still called the valley of blessing to this day. From the valley of battle to the valley of blessing. I want to tell you that God can turn something around in your life. 
Talking about miracles in the valley. Number two, look for the possibility. Can these bones live? I know there's a lot of bones, but can these bones live? God never asks Ezekiel, do you see the bones? Jeez, huh? Whew. Crazy, huh? No, he, never, he never says, do you see them? He says, can they live? Because mm. it, it doesn't take faith to say what you see. <laughs> I hope you hear me. I'm not talking about denial, but I'm talking about faith, and faith is crazy. So just stick with me. It doesn't take faith to say what you see. I, I think that I, I love authenticity and I love vulnerability and I love honesty, but God seems to hate complaining. And I don't know the line, but I do know there's a line. And I know we can go from keeping it real to complaining. Blah. So I don't, so I try to stay away from the line. <laughs> Because once I cross the line, I'm, I'm stuck in a wilderness. Because yeah. complainers stay in wilderness. So I, so I try to, so yes, I have to be real. Yes, I have to be honest. Yes, I have to ask for prayer. Yes, I have to admit my need. Yes, I have to be honest about my, my emotions. But I can't let that become complaining. I, I can't just talk about the bones. I have to talk about God and about what God can do even with the bones. I hope, I'm, I hope I'm making sense right now. So the question was not, do you see the bones? The question was, can they live? Can you see the possibility? Can you see what God can do? And God is not asking because he doesn't know the answer. <laughs> God never asks a question because he doesn't know the answer. Every time God asks you a question, he's wanting to reveal a truth to you. Let me say that one more time. Just write that down if you're taking notes. If you're not taking notes, start taking notes. Every time God asks you a question, he wants to reveal a truth to you. It's not that he doesn't know, it's that you don't know. But he's about to show you what you don't know. God loves to ask questions, and every conclusion is important. Let me just walk you through a couple of questions. Look at this on the screen. Adam, where are you? Jacob, what is your name? Jeremiah, what do you see? Nation of Israel, are you willing and obedient? Shunammite woman, what do you have in your house? Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? Man by the pool, do you want to be healed? Disciples, who do you say that I am? Ezekiel, can these bones live? God knew every answer to every question. But they had to get honest and they had to get on his level. They had to rise up to how he saw it in order to receive what he wanted to do in their life. Ezekiel saw bones, God saw possibility. Ezekiel saw dry bones, God saw a big miracle. To Ezekiel, it was hopeless. To God, the conditions were just right. Because <laughs> see, we all have a natural bent towards negativity. We all do. We all have a natural bent towards just complaining. It's, it's actually, and, and it actually can become easier to, um, to relate with people that way, right? Because if, if you're too positive, they'll like, think you're bragging or right so if like you really had a good day or had a good week or got a good victory or you know something good happened in your life it's like you really can't even talk about it right because so you almost have to always be negative and then we all just relate on negativity oh man it's I mean it's 70 today but it's about to get hot oh. am I right it's like why what why do we talk that way? How you doing? How you know? <laughs> Busy. 
It's just, we, we just always have a natural bent that way. They would arrange the boards. <laughs> just my luck. You know, we just, we have this natural bent. Again, I'm not saying you can't be honest. I am saying be careful not to just throw up every negative thing that you can come up with. <clears throat> because really what you're doing is you are, you are defending yourself and protecting yourself from disappointment. Can these bones live? Can a miracle happen? Can our relationship be restored? Can my body be healed? I have to see the possibility. And then, and then lastly, this is, and this is where the miracle life happens. You take a step into the unknown. Take a step into the unknown. I love this. Uh, Ezekiel, can these bones live? Lord, you know. That's a really saved and sanctified way of saying, I don't know. I don't know why you're asking. You, you're God. Why are we talking about this? You tell me. But Ezekiel couldn't say all that because his Old Testament, God could have killed him. So he goes, Lord, you know. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Doesn't seem like it. Feels unlikely, looks impossible. See, I love that Ezekiel, I, I mean, just in my, in my own weakness and in my own faith journey, I love that Ezekiel didn't say, hallelujah, absolutely, Lord, glory to God. <laughs> absolutely. No, I love that he went, I don't know. Yeah? Yeah? Like, yes with a question mark? Yeah? Yeah? I think God appreciates a yes with an exclamation point. I think he does. I think he appreciates a yes with a period. Yes. But you know what? God loves any kind of yes. God, yeah. Maybe. I think as your voice gets higher, you have less faith. Y'all been there? Well, you got faith. Yes. You got less faith? Yeah. You got no faith? Yeah. Have y'all ever squeaked to Jesus? I know some of y'all shout to Jesus. Some of y'all sing to Jesus. Some of y'all pray to Jesus. I've had a couple of squeaks. I've had a, I'm just telling you right now, I've had a couple of... And he'll take that. He'll take a high-pitched, scared, maybe. He will take, and I think, he will take a yes with a question mark. See, and, and let me just remind you, some areas of your life, it's very easy to believe God for. Can I bless your business? Yes. Will your children serve the Lord? Yes. Can I help your marriage? Do you know my spouse? <laughs> Since we're asking questions. <laughs> so, so, sometimes it's really confident and sometimes it's, Lord, you know. But give God that. Don't give him a no. Don't harden your heart. Don't turn your back. Be weak with God. His strength is made perfect in your weakness, not in your strength. See, so many of us are waiting on great faith to do something. You don't need great faith. Jesus called it mustard seed sized faith. A little bit of faith. God does not need big faith, perfect faith, great faith. God will take a little bit of faith, broken faith, and wavering faith, and he will do something with it. His grace, always perfect, always 100%. Our faith, usually on the other side. Usually pretty weak, usually pretty emotional, usually pretty wavering, usually a little closer to 1% than 100%. 
But God's grace is that strong and that big. So I give God what I do have, knowing it's not enough in the natural, but it's more than enough if I'll trust God with it. Can I get an amen, everybody? Can I remind you, Jesus been teaching, Jesus been preaching, and he starts going all day long. And by the end of the day, there's about 15 to 20,000 people there. They're hungry, they're weak, they're tired, and Jesus just keeps preaching. So the disciples are hungry, but they don't want to tell Jesus they're hungry. So the disciples tell Jesus the people are hungry. (laughs) Read the Bible. Lord, the people, it's late. The people. We could go all night. We're down to fast, but the people. And Jesus says, you give them something to eat. They don't have anything, or they don't think they have anything. And they find a little boy with a little lunch. Just newsflash, in case you don't know. um, A couple of pieces of bread and a couple of pieces of fish is not enough to feed 15,000 people. Yeah, 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 it's not, it's not. Until you give it to Jesus. And you give him your not enough. You give him your weakness. You give him, I wish I had enough for everybody, but this is what I have. I don't feel like I have enough grace to be married, to raise these kids, to run this business, to take on this new adventure. I don't feel like I, ha- I, don't feel like I have enough, but here's what I got. So here you go, God. And then I give God what I do have, knowing it's not enough in my hands. I give God a Lord, you know. I give God a maybe. And I start with that. And a a lot of times, that's how your life feels. Did God call you to start that business? I think. Did God call you to Vegas? I thought, Jamin, did God call you to plant City Light? Every week's a little different. Depends how you treat me. (laughs) Because remember this about faith. Your flesh, your earth suit, it hates faith. It hates it. Oh, it hates it. It hates it. So every time you operate in faith, your flesh will fight you flesh will fight. This is why the scripture talks about training and disciplining your members because you have to learn how to step into faith while your flesh is fighting it because we don't like faith. We like comfort. Yeah. We like comfort food. We like comfort clothes. I mean, I don't know what's happening with this, like the new, whatever the new fashion is. We're back to parachute pants. When did this happen? I'm not mad. This is like the new thing, but I'm happy about it because I feel like I'm in pajamas. So I'm not going to complain. I hope this. La- I hope skinny jeans don't come back. Amen, everybody. I'm like, I'm liking this. Just, just worship the Lord in these things. Pray for Israel in these. I don't even need a prayer shawl. I just, I got one on. But we like comfort clothes. We like comfortable beds. We like comfortable chairs. We. We like comfort. Flesh is never comfortable. Faith never leads you into comfort. Faith never leads you into ease. It it leads you into discomfort. See, you know, preachers will start preaching. They start preaching good, and they say things like, faith and fear can't coexist. And I'm like, no, I think they live together. I think they're, I think the fact that I, that I need faith proves that I have fear and the fact that I'm fearful proves that I need faith. Don't, don't think because you're fearful you don't have faith. If, if you've got some fear, if you've got some anxiety, if you've got some, oh Lord, you know, <laughs> it just proves that you need faith and that it's probably your faith that got you there. And then you live in that and you live in the tension of that. Peace is not some feeling in your stomach that you get. Yeah, I just didn't have a peace about it. 
I come from the charismatic church background. So when we talk about peace, we, we put our hand on our belly, right? Because that's what we do. You know, I just didn't have a peace about. Jamie received an offering, but I just didn't have a peace about giving. <laughs> I bet you didn't. You know, they want people to serve, but I just don't have a peace right now. I'm in a resting season right now. How long are you going to rest, sis? Yeah, I know baptism's important. I said, I haven't felt like the Holy Spirit's leading me to get baptized yet. <laughs> what? <laughs> Faith is a pit in your stomach. You know, I'd like to lead a small group, but you know, I just don't know about people in my house. It's a little weird. You take the step of faith. And then once you've taken it, you go, oh, I'm glad I did that. When I was in the boat and God was calling me out on the water, I didn't have peace about walking out on the water. But now that I'm walking, I'm going, oh my gosh, look what God can do. Oh my God, I gave and I didn't die. I served and I have more energy. I I, I got baptized and my, and my faith is stronger. I forgave and I got free. I, I started reading the Bible. I feel like I got more time. Now that I'm walking on the water, I'm grateful. It was scary when I was in the boat. I didn't have peace in the boat. I actually had peace on the waves. Faith takes guts and where there is clarity, you don't need faith. And many want clarity to take a step of faith, but wherever there's clarity, faith is not required. So you got to take the risk, take the step. You got to try, you got to. I'll end with this. You got to move on a maybe. Let me have, you got to move on a maybe. You got to move on a maybe. Let me, let me prove it. First Samuel 14. Uh, Jonathan um, goes to his armor bearer. He goes to his assistant and he's like, yo, let's go, let's go pick a fight with those uncircumcised pagans over there. I love it. He starts cussing them out. I love the Old Testament. Watch this. He's like, you see that, that army over there? Yeah, that. Let's go fight him. <laughs> Watch this. He did not say, I've been in prayer and fasting for 40 days, and the Lord has ensured the victory. Uh, the Holy Spirit woke me up this morning at 3 a.m., and I just know I have the word of the Lord. We need to go fight. I know God will give us the victory. Look what he, look what he said. Maybe. Maybe does not... We, we, Maybe has left the Christian vocabulary. Maybe has left the life of faith. That's why American Christians are so comfortable. We don't sacrifice. Because, because we've removed maybe from our vocabulary. Maybe I'll do something. And his friend goes, Okay. And on a maybe, they take a step of faith. Jabin, are you saying I can't hear from God? Are you saying I can't be sure of a word from God? Are you saying, no, no, no. Here's what I'm saying. I'm saying it doesn't matter how sure you are when you hear it. Give it 24 hours and the devil will be trying to talk you out of it. Hello? So even if you're sure in the moment, within a couple of days, you're going to be like, maybe, I don't know. Some of y'all have given that way before. Maybe when you first started tithing at this church, your faith got all high, you got all excited, and you, I'm going to start getting up, I'm going to do it. And you did it, man. Maybe you walked to one of those boxes and you dropped an offering in, or you went online and you sent it. And within about 2.8 seconds, you went, the devil lied to me. He got me all emotional. <laughs> J Caesar started playing all those pretty chords, and Jabin got all funny, and I, ha, 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 I gave. And now I'm like, what the heck just happened? They robbed me. They robbed me. <laughs> They robbed me. <laughs> I mean, in the moment, you were sure, and then 
you start questioning because you're going to have to have to learn how to live in the maybe. Thy word, Psalm 119, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Uh, it's a, it's like, it's like right here. It is not massive spotlights into my future. It is not the Luxor light. It is not Las Vegas, the brightest city in the world. It is. It's right here. And God gives me enough faith for my next step. Lord, you know. Am I helping anybody this morning? Give God some praise. Come on, everybody. May 2016, we pulled into Las Vegas to hang out with some friends and to see Shannon's family. And we were driving on the, on the, fifth, on the 15th. And we were coming up. We just passed Prim. We passed Sloan. And you hit, that, you hit that one, kind of that one turn, and then whoo, there's the city. And as I saw the city, tears begin to fall down my face. And I knew we were home. I knew it. I knew it. That weekend, I went home. It was Mother's Day weekend. I went home. My pastor, Jensen Franklin, preached. I said, I have to talk to you. I have to talk to you. He said, okay, I gotta go to LAX tomorrow. Drive me to LAX and we'll talk. So he got it, picked him up. And we're driving for a while. I'm, I'm driving, he's sitting there, we're talking. And he finally, he like turns in his seat. He goes, well. And I go, pastor, I got the word of the Lord. We have to move to Vegas and plant that church. And he went, you got the word of the Lord? I said, we got the word of the Lord. <laughs> he said, are you sure? And I started trembling. <laughs> and a lump went into my throat. And I went, I think. <laughs> he came, kind of sat back in his seat. And he said, well, boy. That's all you're going to get. I went, really? He said, yeah. He said, you got an I think. You have a Holy Ghost maybe. And I went, yeah. Yeah. I said, I got and then he did what every great pastor does. He pastored me through it. He said, stick around another year. Can you stick around another year? Shannon was pregnant with Goldie. He said, have the baby. Get through the holidays. Don't plant the church with a pregnant wife. Enjoy this next year. He said, man, you might have the baby. You might not even want to move. You might have missed God. I said, Psh, all right, let's do that. <laughs> One year later, we packed up everything. We moved here. A year after that, we started this church. I, I want you to hear it. I want you to hear it. On a, I'm pretty darn sure. And I hope that doesn't offend you. Because I, pr I promise you the moment it happened, it was, it was 100%. Within 48 hours, it was 90%. Within a week when I met with my pastor, it was about 51%. <laughs> Six years later, it's back to 100%. Y'all feel me? Take the step of faith.